So we've entered the winter break for the Superliga season. However, we do still have three more Europa League games to play, which I'm thinking we're probably going to play all three in this episode. We might only play two of them, depending on what happens, basically. Because if we actually finish in the top eight, doesn't really matter what happens against Juventus, does it? Which is a weird thing to say. We are top of the table. We are four points clear. And I'm not quite sure how we've done this. We've managed to win all three matches in the league in between episodes. 1-0 against AAB, 1-0 against Michelin, and 2-1 against Randers. A massive result that one was. Especially when you think we played Ekwala in defence because we're still having these problems with Leffer Gordon and his fitness. In the Europa League, we win 4-0 against Dunstreda with a hat-trick from Prada. And we've been knocked out of the GBU Pokalen, the competition that we won last season. I think the reason why we are currently top by four points is because Copenhagen lost. They did. They lost against AAB when we beat Randers, which is massive. Copenhagen are eight points behind us. I think as well, Copenhagen played Randers and then Randers won. There you can see that. So quite a lot has happened in between episodes. Was there anything else that Copenhagen... They lost against AGF as well. Have they lost three in a row? That's ridiculous. They've actually not won a league game since the 26th of October. That's mad. The annoying thing is the Randers are now chasing us. Anyway, we're going to play our three Europa Conference League, not Europa, Europa League matches. I've just seen, hold on, Copenhagen are in this one still. And they're 24th, they're doing all right. Anyway, back to our matches. We are first up against Familicial from Portugal. I don't know whether that's how it's pronounced. That that's what we're going to go for. It's going to be Hindrich in goal, Mossen, Gordon, Darlan and Pelamati in defence. Orlando, Colorado and Babu today in midfield because it is, a, a, as he said, Emil Hoyland. It's not Emil Hoyland. What's, I've forgotten his name. Hulmund, that's his name. He's currently out injured with a cold, bless him. It's going to be Pete and Prader on the wings, Barisic leading the line. It's full strength, as close as we can get to anyway. Babu isn't actually a terrible replacement, is he, for Hulmund? You'd think I'd know where we are in the old Europa League, but I've got no idea. I think we're about 10th. I think that's roughly where we are. Obviously, beating Dunstreda has helped us massively when it comes to points. So I, I think we're kind of in the top half. We're definitely in the top half, aren't we? Let's be honest. A win here might be enough to guarantee us... in. I think we've probably already guaranteed us uh, playoff football, but it should be enough to kind of keep us in the fight at the very least. Can we change? No, we can't. There's a highlight. I was going to say, can we change one of those little screens to show us the league very briefly? Hindrich, Darlan and Gordon making an absolute shambles of what's going on there. Mossen with the ball on the right for us. Running down the line is the right back. Colorado collects it. Back to the Egyptian. Orlando does something. I don't know what happened. Right, league table. Can we see the Europa? I don't want scores. How do we change it? That one. League table, Europa League. We are currently 10th, potentially 11th, depending on what happens in this match. So we are still in a very, very good position. We could even finish in the top eight, which is probably the goal, isn't it? Colorado with the ball for us, finds Pete. 21st minute, Mossen on the right, goes down the line, finds Colorado two in the middle. Barisic is one, Pete's collected this. Colorado again. Orlando, long range effort from the, I want to say Honduran. He might be from El Salvador. He's Honduran. I got it right first time. So because of all the other results and goals that are going in, we've climbed up to ninth somehow. I assume some teams who are on the same points as us have just conceded goals, things like that. So we are still in a good position. We could do with a win here, partially because obviously doing well in the Europa League is always good for us. But also wins give us coefficient points. And every time I start talking about what we need to do, we end up conceding a goal. It's 1-0 to Familicial. That's probably still not how you pronounce it. Conceding that goal actually only drops us down to 11th, but we do have to play Feyenoord and Juventus, the final two teams in our sort of group stage matches, which is not going to be easy. You've been unlucky. We've not seen anything, really. We've not seen much at all. They've just had one half-decent chance and scored it. Not a huge amount is going on. We've almost hit the hour mark. Darlan collects the ball from Pelamati. Darlan gets it back to Pelamati on that left-hand side, plays it in the middle. He's, it's fallen for Colorado. Hold on. Awful defending. I don't care. We've equalised. Jean Carlos Colorado is the man to get that goal. It is 1-1. Pelamati with a throw on the left once again. Two minutes later. So not a lot of time has passed since our equalising goal. Pete's not going to get there. Colorado finds Pete this time though. Off to the right hand side. Three in the box. Mossen is there as well. Lurking at the back. And oh my word. Hossam Mossen does not score goals often. But when he does, they are absolutely blinding. So we are 2-1 up now which is good enough to put us into fifth place in the Europa League, ahead of Valencia, ahead of Juventus, ahead of some very big, big teams there. 
Pete finds Colorado down the right hand side, skips and plays it all the way back to Gordon instead. Babu to Darlin, left hand side Pelamati with acres of space is where we want to be going. Goes for a run, does the Italian, stops and holds up play. Babu, we want Pelamati to keep running, we've used him but he didn't move anywhere. Parade has gone down, it's not a penalty. We're going to have this weird VAR moment where, is it, a, is it a penalty? Is it not a penalty? It's not, he was outside the area. Oh, what a surprise, he was outside the area. Pete has gone over to take it then. Is he going to whip it towards the back post? He does left for Gordon's there. He's not going to get on the end of it. And it's going to be a corner. Pete's going over to take it. Gordon's unmarked at the front post. Darlin's there. He's not jumped for it. Darlin didn't jump for it. And now Familicial can go for a little break forward. And nothing happens from it. Fair enough. We've done no subs. Uh, we are 80 minutes in. We've done no subs. We should probably do some changes. I think I'm going to do five changes, you know. We're going to do Babby as well coming up. Right, so what we have done is we have... Basically taken off, uh, where is it? Babu, Mosson, Barisic, Gordon and Pete. Leonard, Ekwala, Carniero, Barnabas and Lundsgaard coming on. You can probably work out what positions they all play in. Barnabas' ball forward is nowhere near Lundsgaard. We probably, I mean, I did take quite a big risk there. Bringing off left for Gordon. I know he's always tired. We've got the ball through Carniero. Plays it back, he does. Jack Leonard crosses it in. Colorado is there. Gene Carlos Colorado gets his second of the game. It's saying Lundsgaard was offside. Don't be offside again, mate. We're getting VAR, obviously, and the goal has been awarded, and it is 3-1, and I think that should be good enough to see us through, to see us picking up three points, and vital coefficient points as well for Denmark, which is always something we kind of need. All in all, after a nervy first half, the second half was spectacular. Mossen's goal, the pick of the bunch, I think. Colorado with two as well. A 3-1 win. We are looking likely to be basically getting through to the Europa League knockout stages. Two more matches to play, and we're going to jump straight into the final game, I think, which I we do have a long wait now. I think we've got to wait like a month and a half until we play Feyenoord with no matches and a January transfer window opening where I'm not expecting to sell some players. So we'll come back with some players being sold, most likely. We are now on the 22nd of January. The January transfer window is in full effect, and we have sold a player... And I'm not sure whether this was a good idea, but I felt like the money was kind of too good to turn down. For six and a half million pounds up front, potentially rising, I say potentially, eventually rising in theory to seven and a half million pounds. Andrea Pelamati has returned back to his native Italy. He's had a very good season for us. Only scoring a goal, I see season, two seasons technically. I think we got, for a player that we brought in on a free transfer to get six and a half million pounds for him, is actually not bad business. We do have Gercic as our backup left back, who's probably going to be playing between now and when our replacement comes in, which will hopefully be in this episode. I was planning on signing this man, but we're not. We don't have the money for it. He is obviously, as you can see, an Argentine international left back. He's going to cost three million pounds up front, and then three million pounds in additional clauses. The problem is we don't have the three million pounds to pay up front. We've got about one point nine million. And we don't have the wage budget to be able to adjust and things like that. I don't think we're going to be able to sell anyone in the next couple of days to be able to kind of make up that extra million pounds we need to bring in Enrique. But we also have somebody else lined up who should be joining. But we're not going to tell you about that until it actually happens, which, like I said, should be in this episode. We should be bringing in a brand new left back who isn't as good as Gercic at the moment, but he is from one of my favourite clubs in Football Manager and I'm hoping there's potential there. I always buy with potential rather than current ability, which might not be a good idea. It's going to be, for the final game, Hindrich in goal, Moss and Gordon Dullin and Gercic as that left back, Orlando Hulman and Babu in midfield, Pete Prada and Barisic leading the lines. We've got some interest in players. Orlando's wanted by Cincinnati. Falster is wanted by AAB on loan, apparently. Barisic was wanted by Watford earlier on in the January transfer window, but they've clearly called on that interest. I was considering that if they put in a bit of, say, 15 to 20 million pounds, I probably would have taken it and then played Lundsgaard as our number one striker until the end of the season. The window's still open. There is still time. So Feyenoord should be a draw. On, on paper, I think we are as good as Feyenoord. I think the board expect to draw. The fans expect to draw. So I think we have to kind of safely expect to draw ourselves. We are currently sat fifth place in the table. I think a win will guarantee us the straight through to the knockout rounds, which is probably more than we re could really expect in our first real season in the Europa League. Babu's just scored after seven and a half minutes, his seventh goal of the season, 
we take the lead. I do kind of want to win this game and kind of secure the knockout football straight away because next up we do have to play Juventus and obviously they're very good at football. So I don't want to have to go to Juventus and try and get a point or even worse, a win. Is that Nathan Redmond? It's not Nathan Redmond. It's Z Z Quinn something Redmond. That's a confusing name. He's real as well. Ze Zeppi, Zeppi Quino Redmond. I've never heard of this man. He actually looks quite good. So right now, we are fourth place in the Europa League table behind Milan, Villarreal and Arsenal. Juve closely behind us. We're obviously up there on goals scored, I assume, or goal difference because we scored, what was it, nine goals in the first two matches. So we are, I mean, I'm quite happy. I'm, to be honest, I'm quite happy with how our Europa League has gone so far this season. Redmond's going to go for another effort, easily saved by Otto Hindrich down to his left. Half time then, it is 1-0, quite an uneventful game, which actually isn't the end of the world, is it? I'm happy with your performance, keep it up. I'm looking at Prada maybe potentially bringing you off. Obviously, something I haven't mentioned yet in this match, left for Gordon's fitness, should be fixed now because he's not had to play a huge amount of football in between, basically, the last match in this one. Pete is injured. Denson's coming on. Fair enough. I guess we're going to have to do that. We've also got, I didn't mention this, but because of selling Pelamati, we've registered CC. I don't know how to say his name, and he's not a real man, so I can't really offend him, can I? So, yeah, CC's come in as a backup left-back to Gurchich, although probably won't be our backup left-back for too much longer. He might be, though, in the Europa League. 62 minutes now on the clock, and are we going to get a second? Maybe not at the moment. Orlando chests it down. He's got an injury. Needs to make a possible substitution for that injury because central midfielders, we are kind of all right with central midfielders, but I don't like to get them injured. I don't like, especially players like Orlando, Hulmond are two kind of quite important players. So I think we're going to have to do that one. He's hampered by injury anyway, so we are going to do that change. What do we do? Do we do Colorado? I think we do Colorado. We do that. We do that. We do that. There we go. That's our midfield fixed. Let's do some more changes. Barisic is coming off. Lundsgaard coming on. Prade is coming off. Carniero is coming on. I know Barisic didn't need to come off there, but I felt like I want to play Lundsgaard and we've already scored our goal. And hopefully if we can just hold on, that'll be perfect. If everything stays this way, we are not guaranteed to finish in the top eight purely because we are only two points clear of Bromby. We're three points clear of lots of other teams but I'm hoping our goal difference is far superior, so they shouldn't be too much of a problem. Does mean we have to play Juventus, and we're both playing for a draw, which I'm not even sure how that works. Can we just kind of both sit back and defend and nobody attack? I, I do want the coefficient points, though. I do kind of want to win. Pete's out for up to two months or four to five weeks once we do that. Four to five weeks for Pete is not ideal. We've picked up a bit more money. Two to four weeks for Orlando. Again, not ideal. So we haven't guaranteed ourselves, but look when you look at this, the teams that can catch us, one, two, three, four, five, six teams can catch us. There are five teams ahead or five teams that could potentially drop out, which means in order for us to drop out, every single one of these teams need to win their game. Every single one. I'd like to think we should be through I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure we're through. Anyway, we've still got the transfer window open, so we'll come back for the Juventus game unless some transfer business happens, which I think it probably will. Welcome to the club, N'Golo Cannon. 22-year-old Ivorian left-back, centre-back, attacking midfielder. Apparently, he can play there. Signed from ASEC Mimosas. Has only cost £300,000. Two-footed as well, which I think could come in very, very handy. A complete wing-back is actually his kind of speciality we obviously played that that uh, the wing back on attack I think Cannon could be our player for the future and also do a decent job now unfortunately he can't get registered for the Europa League yet but he might be able to get registered for the next stage of European competition he is registered for the Superliga which is always handy so we're now going to play against Juve a match that we're expected to lose both the fans and the board expect us to lose I want to draw a draw would be handy. We are kind of struggling for injuries for this one. So the starting 11 actually doesn't look particularly bad. It's Hindrich in goal, Moss and Gordon, Darlan, Gurchich in defence, as we expect. Babu, Colorado and Kjulman in midfield. And then the wings are where we have some issues. Denton Barnabas starts on the right-hand side. Carniero starts on the left. Barisic starts up front. If we scroll down, you can see Pete's out injured, Prada's out injured and Orlando all out injured. It means we've got three spaces on our subs bench. 
and I've included the under 21s who are registered. So I guess we'll just do that. Um, ask the assistant to pick some. We, we literally don't have enough players to fill the entire subs bench. So we've got Clayton Moskin, who is going to be getting himself a squad number, and also Macaulay Foden. Any relation to Phil? I mean, it'd be weird if you were, to be honest. You're part Danish. You're English. I mean, you're awful, aren't you? Imagine being one of these two players, and you've never been called up for the first team. You've never been called up for the B team. And all of a sudden, you've been stuck on a plane to Italy, and you might be playing against Juventus. Like, in in Italy, in the San Siro. Is that where Ju Juve play? I feel like I should know this. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's mad, right? They play at the Juventus Stadium. I don't know whether that's, like, a naming rights problem, or they've built a new stadium. They could have built a new stadium. We are, like, nine years into the future. Juve, obviously, going to be very good. We are not, not so good. I don't think we're terrible, but I don't think we're at Juve's standard, so I'm expecting this is probably going to be a defeat. We're also playing a Micronesian, aren't we? Let's... Let's be real here, we're playing a Micronesian on the right wing, and he's already up to a 7. What's he done? To be honest, what's anyone done? Nothing's happening. We're 25 minutes in, it's nil-nil, both teams literally don't want to win, or don't want to lose this game. That's all we really need to do is not lose. Chaser's corner comes in, headed effort from Moffy, I think it was, goes over the bar, first highlight goes to Juve, but it wasn't very good. If it all stays this way, we're fine. Half time's nil-nil. It is very, very uneventful. Two teams who just need a draw. I'm happy, keep it up. Leffer Gordon's on a 6.4. Barisic is on a 6.4 as well. We probably need to keep an eye on you too. Who else is on a 6.4? Babu. Gertic has dropped down to a 6.2. I mean, we're not playing very well at all, but then again, Juve aren't trying. Still nil-nil, still very little going on. We've got 20 minutes left to play. Let's do a whole bunch of subs. Having a poor game is Gertic. So CC's going to come on. Fair enough. Good luck, mate. Carniero's coming off for... I nearly did Foden then. I mean, do we do it? We can't. We don't want to lose. I feel like Moskin's probably a better option. If we're going to do it, we're going to go Moskin. And we're going to do it, we're going to go Moskin. I mean, that's a silly thing to do. Babu's coming off for... What do we do here? Do we do that? Do we do that? We'll do Markovic. So Colorado's that way round? That way round makes a bit more sense. Leffer Gordon's on a 6-2. Barisic is struggling as well. So Lundsgaard's coming on. Let's just, let's just press play. We've got 20 minutes to ideally not concede. It is looking a little bit nervy that lots of teams are now currently on 16 points. All it takes is for Juve to score and a couple more teams to get onto 16 points and we might actually be dropping out of the top eight, which is not what we want. Denson Barnabas has the ball. It's taken 85 minutes to get the second highlight of the match. Barnabas with a volley upfield, which is a weird thing to do. It is Chiesa on that left-hand side. First time cross-ish. Gets it straight into the hands of the goalkeeper, Hindrich. So, five minutes and 30 seconds plus injury time. Left for Gordon to Markovic. Mossen collects it. Markovic is not going to run onto the end of that. It is. Is that Trevor Shalabar? I assume that's Trevor Shalabar, not Nathan Shalabar. Is it Nathan? Is that his brother? I can't even remember. Cross comes in. Tete's there. Heads over the bar. That's going to be that highlight as well. It, it's, all, it's a terrible game of football. It's a terrible game of football. And if you paid for a ticket for this, I feel sorry for you because you're getting nothing. Markovic has not really controlled that well at all, has he? Back with the goalkeeper, final minute and a half of normal time. Mossen's head forward, can't find Barnabas. Friendrup down the left. Mossen intercepts it, loses out to Chaser anyway. Moffy's there, makes it 1-0 to Juve. I mean, it was coming. You could sense that it was coming in the last, like, 10 minutes of the game that they decided to just turn up a little bit. The fact that we've just conceded a pretty poor goal has kind of got me worried. What's happened? We've actually dropped out. Is it Juve? I hate Juve. We've actually dropped down to ninth. Are you joking me? Are you actually joking me? Did I do my maths wrong? I, it's certainly a possibility. It might be... I mean, surely not. Did all the teams that needed to win actually win? That is crazy if that happened. Well, that's that's a bit frustrating, isn't it? We've, we've qualified for the knockout round. Do we see who we play? Do we know who we play? Is that a thing? Can we find... When can we find out? The draw date is the 4th. Okay, that's fine. We're going to go forward to that date anyway because we want to see what happens at the end of the transfer window. We then move into some friendlies as well. So we're going to have a friendly against Porto Manense as well, which obviously we're not going to play. But uh, that... How? How has that happened? So I've just done a thing. You know that Argentine left back? I've just spoke to the chairman and said, please, he's pretty good. And they went... 
Yeah, he is. Actually, we'll, we'll sign him for you. So we have just brought an Argentine international left back, which means our new Ivorian left back that we signed probably isn't going to play anymore because I think we've got somebody better. He is pretty good, isn't he? He is pretty good. In, if we do a comparison, can we compare with Palamati just to see what we've lost and what we've replaced him with? It's, it's almost like for like, isn't it? It's almost like for like. It's very similar, but very slight changes. Arguably, Palamati's slightly better mentally. But Enrique's 23, Palamati's 26. Enrique's better physically, in my opinion, as well. So, I think we've done some good business there. And we can register him as well for the Super League. We'll see what we can do when it comes to the uh, Europa League. I don't think we can get him in the Europa League just yet. Right, we're going to go forward now to the end of the transfer window. We're done financially. We've got nothing. Nothing to spend. So don't expect any more players joining. Right, it's the day of the Europa League knockout draw. And I hope we don't draw somebody boring. I, I genuinely hope we don't draw somebody boring. Um, the fans would like to play for Meliciao again. For some reason. I don't know why they want to do that. I don't want to play them again. I don't think I've ever really done one of these draws. So we've got the seeded teams, which I assume we are. How are we? Oh, we're a seeded team. So we're in the seeded team. We are going to play Dunstred of Rangers for Militiaal Southampton. I mean, we've played four of those teams already. We played Dunstred, we played for Militiaal, we played Southampton, and we played Vicomares. So I want Dinamo, Rangers, Sturmgratz, or Braga, please, is what I'm after. Dunstred will be playing. Wolfsburg? Okay, I mean, this is tedious, isn't it? Young Boys Rangers. I feel like we're going to be playing somebody we played before. It's not for Militiao. Southampton. Final. Good. I'm glad we dodged that one. I mean, I Dynamo? i take Dynamo. Okay. We're, we're playing a Portuguese side or Sturm Graz. Sturm Graz is the one we want. Sturm Graz is the one we get. That is very good. So there is the draw. I assume it's a two-legged affair against Sturm Graz. So we play them away from home, then we play them at home for the second leg. Our friendly against Shakhtar has been cancelled. Yes, because we've got the two matches against Sturm Graz, which I guess is probably going to be in the next episode. And we're also going to be our next competitive matches, which is not ideal. And we've also got Copenhagen straight after. Magical. Okay, well, that's going to do it for this episode. It was a bit of a weird one. I'll quickly show you, actually, the transfers. Um, I don't think we did anything else. Obviously, I mentioned Enrique. Five million, technically, up front. It's, it was three million and then a bunch of clauses, basically, to make it up to five. Um, we have got... What else happened? So, Pelamati went. We know that one. Loaned a couple of players. Carlson Larson apparently left. Samuel Larson, as well, returned from his loan and then went out on a different loan. We also got rid of Leonardo Montano on a free transfer because he was out of contract in six months anyway, and I didn't want to pay him any more wage if we could help it, so we didn't. So yeah, that is going to do it for this episode. Next episode is going to be the doubleheader against Sturm Graz in the Europa League knockout playoff round mess that we really shouldn't have been in, but I assume I can't do maths properly, and that's why we are there. So thank you very much for watching this one. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the next one.